Hello and welcome to the video. Today I'm going to teach you everything in A-level statistics in under 45 minutes. This video is absolutely every topic you need. It covers all exam boards, although there are some things that you need to check, um, so you don't need to worry about it. Uh, and it will include some examples as well. I'll drop the completed notes in the description uh, if you want to check them out. Uh, and if you're new around here, I'd really appreciate it if you give this uh, video a thumbs up and subscribe slash share it with a friend if it helps you out. Uh, it really helps me out. Uh, so let's get into it. So data collection. Um, I'm not going to read this all for you per se, but um, I'm going to upload the notes in the description anyway, so you can always have a look at them uh, kind of at your own pace. So there are different types of data. Uh, so you got like qualitative data, so descriptive in categories, uh, and then there's numerical or quantitative data, so just uh, uh, values, numbers, etc. Sampling techniques, uh, so obviously sometimes we've got populations, sometimes we've got samples, uh, so simple random sampling, each member of the population has an equal chance of being selected, so that's really important if there are obviously more, uh, if there's a chance that someone is going to get selected higher than the others then that's not a simple random sampling systematic sampling is choosing from a frame so if the data is numbered one two three four randomly uh, selecting the starting point and then every nth item in the list so let's say you're going to choose every fifth person um, as long as the numbers are random then that's systematic stratified so a stratified sample is one that ensures uh, the subgroups or strata uh, of a given population are equally, uh, sorry, are each adequately represented within the whole sample population of a research study. So the sample size for each subgroup is equal to the size of the whole sample divided by the size of the whole population times by the population of the subgroup. Quota sampling uh, sample selected based on spe uh, specific criteria, i.e. age group. Um, convenience and opportunity sampling. The first five people who enter the leisure centre or teachers in a single primary school uh, survey to find information about working in primary education across the UK. Uh, Self-selecting sample. So people volunteer to take part in a survey either remotely uh, or in person. Okay, so processing and representation. Uh, so there are different ways of doing this with data. Uh, so qualitative data, you can have pie charts, by, uh, bar charts, compound multiple bar charts, uh, dot charts, pictograms, um, modal class, uh, used as a summary measure, numerical and quantitative data, um, representing using frequency diagrams, histograms, uh, cumulative frequencies, uh, box and whisker, okay, and measures of the cen central tendency, mode, median, mean. If the mean is calculated from group data, it will be an estimated mean because we don't know how uh, the data points are spread within the, each group. Uh, so we assume they're in the middle or evenly spread out. Measures of spread, range, interquartile range, standard deviation uh, so if we need to find the quartiles um, if n is odd then you find the median so you put them in order um, you put them in order so that's the median so then now I've got two halves of my data if you take that seven out like so and then you find the median of each of those uh, upper and lower sides um, and they are your upper quartile and lower quartile if n is even again you split that you find your median okay in this case it's six it's not a data point but you split uh, your data in half you find the median of both sides so that's 4.5 that's 8.5 and this is your upper quartile and this is your lower quartile standard deviation um, so these formulas depending on your exam board uh, you might be given these um, on 
on the whole, you're, you're mainly given these. Um, please do check your exam board to see if you need to divide by n or n minus 1. It is different for different exam boards, so please do check. And it's just knowing how to apply these. So obviously x bar is the mean, n is the sample size, um, and then x is every data point. Okay, by a variate data. So by being two, variate meaning variable. Uh, so this basically means you've got data with two variables. So investigating correlation between two variables. Um, so you need an independent variable is usually plotted on the horizontal axis. Uh, the numerical measure of correlation can be calculated using Spearman's rank or product moment correlation uh, coefficient, which is also known as R. Uh, and that's between 1 and minus 1. So something that's perfectly pos uh, positive correlation would be 1. And something that's perfectly negative correlation would be negative 1. And something that kind of has no correlation would be near or exactly 0. Uh, take care when interpreting the correlation coefficient. Look at the scatter graph. So you might have two distinct groups misleading R value. You might have R close to zero, but there is a relationship. It's just not linear, so like the quadratic in the middle one. And there might be an outlier distorting the R value. Um, so j just be wary. Make sure you look at the scatter graph. So cleaning the data, you need to remove outliers and anomalies. And you do this by either uh, removing data, which is 1.5 times the interquartile range. So let's say I've got an upper quartile of 8 and a lower quartile of 3. That means my interquartile range is 5. So anything, so 1.5 times 5 is equal to 7.5. So anything that is um, 7.5 above or below the lower and upper quartile. So I need to add 7.5 there. So anything that's greater than 15.5, you need to remove. And anything that's less than uh four uh, negative 4.5 you need to remove from there just as an example um or you can use the standard deviation so two times the standard deviation you need uh above or below the mean so let's say the standard deviation is i don't know let's say five um and the mean is 100 then we need to remove anything that is uh, above 110, so greater than 110 or less than um, 90, or oh, not 990. Okay, probability, so outcome is an event that can happen in an experiment. Sample space is a list of all the possible outcomes for an experiment. Independent events means uh, the, the events don't depend on each other. Um, so if one thing happens, it doesn't affect whether the next thing's what happens in the next thing. Uh, mutually exclusive means uh, two events that cannot happen at the same time. So for example, if I roll a dice, I can't get a one and a six at the same time. Okay, so this is just some notation. So A intersect B, uh, A and B both happen. For independent events, this is just uh, probability, probability of A times the probability of B. Uh, a union B, it basically means A or B or both happen um, for independent events. This is A, probability of A plus probability of B minus uh, the intersection. Uh, a complement, A does not happen, and this is just one minus probability of A. Okay, mutually exclusive events. There's no overlap, um, so the probability that they both happen is zero. Um, and the probability that either of them happy is just the addition of their probabilities. Okay, so this is uh, an example. So sample space example on the left here. Um, so this is all about fractions, basically, and just understanding um, what's going on. So find the probability of picking a female. So we're going to... So how many females are there in total? There are 53 in total. Fifty three in total and there are a hundred people, so fifty three over a hundred or zero point five three. Okay. Picking uh, a junior male, so how many junior males are there? Fifteen uh, out of a hundred. 
because I'm picking out of everyone there, so 0 0.15. Not picking a junior male, well, that's just 1 minus 0 0.15, which is 0 0.85. Picking a junior and a senior when two members are uh, selected at random. So chances of picking a junior, how many juniors are there in total? 35 out of 100 and I'm timesing them uh, and how many seniors are there in total but bearing in mind I've already picked one person one junior so it's going to be 65 over 99 which is don't know if you can hear the helicopter hovering above my house but if you can good for you uh, and that equals 91 over 396 okay next example on his way to work Josh goes through two sets of traffic lights the probability that he, that he has to stop at the first set is 0 0.7 probability that uh, for the second set is 0 0.6 and we're assuming independence find the probability that he has to stop at only one of the traffic lights um, so we can ignore uh stop stop we can ignore go go we want go stop and stop go so so that is 0 0.7 so that is getting stopped at the first one uh, and that's times 0 0.4 which is not getting stopped by the second one and then we want to add uh 0 0.3 times by 0 0.6 so you can draw a tree diagram here um if if you need to um you shouldn't need to or, but if you if you feel more comfortable doing that then please do so i'm just using the and and or rule here as well because i want uh is stopped and then not stopped so and so i'm timesing uh and then i've got or because we've got the two options or he's not stopped by the first one and he is stopped by the second set um, so many times it's in the calculator. I really hope you can't hear that helicopter because it's really loud. Uh, 0 0.46. Moving on to conditional probability. When the outcome of the first event, uh, uh, sorry, the first event affects the outcome of the second event, the probability of the second event happening is conditional on the probability of the first event happening. So probability of B given A means the probability of A given, sorry, is basically what it says. Uh, probability of B given A is equal to the probability of them both happening dividing by the probability of A. So I can't highlight how important this is. This is so important. This is so important to remember. If the probabilities needed are not stated clearly, a tree diagram or Venn diagram may help. Okay, so we want the probability of not wrapped given that it's milk. Okay, so we I've drawn a uh, Venn diagram here for you. Um, but if you, you could draw this yourself or you don't even necessarily need uh, to draw it. Um, so in a box of dark and milk chocolates, there are 20 chocolates. Uh, so there are 12 12 of the chocolates are dark, so that instantly tells me 8 are milk. Uh, 3 of these dark chocolates are wrapped. There are 5 wrapped chocolates in the box, so that means 2 wrapped milk. Um, given that a chocolate chosen is milk chocolate, what is the probability that it is not wrapped? Okay, so I've taken, I would know that I've taken a milk chocolate first, so it's out of eight, um, and how many of them are not wrapped? Well, that's six. And if I simplify that, then I get three quarters. Probability distributions. Uh, probability distribution shows the probabilities of the possible outcomes. Uh, this basically means the sum of all the probabilities is equal to 1. So calculate the value of y. Hopefully that's very straightforward. So you're just going to add them all up and equal it to 1. So this gives me 5y equals 0 0.5. So y is equal to 0 
calculate uh, the expected uh, of x. So we do 0 times 0 0.5, add, so I'm basically timesing these two values together and adding them together. That's how you find ex. Uh, 1 times 0 0.3. So this is 0 0.3, because I know y is 0 0.1. This is 0 0.2. And then plus 2 times 0 0.2. So ex is equal to 0 0.3 plus 0 0.4, which is 0 0.7. Binomial distribution. So binomial, by again, 2. Uh, we have two possible outcomes. Uh, it's normally success or failure. So the probability of success is P, probability of failure is one minus P. There are only two outcomes, so it's gotta be one of these two things. Fixed number of trials N, the, the trials are independent. So for example, if I get five successes, that doesn't mean I'm less likely to get a success in the next one. Um, and then EX is equal to NP. P getting R successes, out of n trials is n choose r times the probability uh, to the power of r times 1 minus probability to the power of n minus r. So again, if you can remember this, and depending on your exam board, you're given it or not, um, binomial distribution should not be that difficult. Research has shown that approximately 10% of the population are left-handed. A group of eight students are selected at random. What is the probability that less than two of them are left-handed? Uh, so there's a couple of ways you can do this, uh, but this is basically the probability of zero students, probability of one students, um, and we can just add them together. Okay, so um, if I can do that, how do I find the probability of zero? Well, this is going to be, so there are eight students, so n is equal to eight. Let me make that clear. P is equal to 0 0.1. That's a success because 10% is 0 0.1. Uh, and then one minus P is, of course, 0 0.9. So probability of zero is eight, choose zero times 0 0.1 to the power of uh, 0 times 0 0.9 to the power of 8, uh, which actually is just the same as 0 0.9 to the power of 8. Probability of 1 is 8 choose 1 times 0 0.1 to the power of 1 times 0 0.9 to the power of 7. Um, if you add these two things together, so probability that x is less than 2, which is what we're trying to find out, when you type it all in the calculator, you get 0 0.813. You can also use this using your, cal you can also find this um, using your calculator or tables if you're given tables. Using cumulative tables, or you can check to see if you know how to use it on the calculator. I'm not going to go through a calculator check. There are loads of YouTube videos on it. Um, I might even post a link in the description on somewhere that you can find how to do it. There are loads of ways. Um, but if you if you want X is less than 5, I think this is just an important tip that not everyone highlights. If you want the probability of X is less than 5, then look up X is less than or equal to 4. Uh, if you want x is greater than or equal to 4, do 1 minus x is less than or equal to 3. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, but if it doesn't, have a look at the link in the description if I put it there. Okay, the normal distribution. Uh, so this is defined by, uh, so mu is the mean of the population and uh, sigma squared is the variance, sigma is the standard deviation. Uh, symmetrical distribution about the mean such that two-thirds of the data is within one standard deviation of the mean, 95% of the data 
is within two standard deviations of the mean. 99.7% of the data is within three standard deviations of the mean. There's a point of inflection, uh, so the bringing in our pure knowledge here, points of inflection on the normal curve lie one standard deviation either side of the mean. Now, occasionally there are some pretty disgusting questions where you need to remember this and you're not using your calculator, you're not uh, doing anything like that, you just need to know these facts. Um, I think they're a bit mean, but that's okay. I'm sure you guys, if you remember it, you'll be able to handle it. Uh, so we want the standard normal distribution where we've got a mean of zero and standard deviation of one and we can do that using Z. So Z is, so you get your data point uh, and you minus the mean uh, and you divide it by the standard deviation and that will give you Z values which will follow the standard normal distribution with mean zero and uh, standard deviation one. So calculating probabilities. Probabilities can be calculated by either using the function on a calculator or by transforming the distribution to the standard uh, normal distribution and you can use the tables if you're given them. So sketch graph shaded uh, and always sketch a graph guys um, and shade the region that you want uh, and hopefully that will give you a good idea of what you need to do. So let's have a look at this example. So IQs are normally distributed with a mean of 100 and certain deviation of 15. What percentage of the population have an IQ less than 120? So the first thing to say is X follows the normal distribution 100, 15 squared. So it's 15 squared because that's obviously the variance we need. I want the probability that X is less than 120. And then, so that means the probability of Z, which is the standard normal distribution, is less than 120 minus 100 over 15, which is the probability that Z is less than 1.333. Okay, now if you look this up in the tables or using these, your calculator, again, I said I'm not going to show you how to do that. Um, there are loads of videos on how to do it. Um, so when you type it in the calculator, you get 0 0.909, which means 90.9% .9 of the population has an IQ less than 120. Okay, calculating the mean, standard deviation, or missing value using the inverse normal. Again, you can do this on the calculator. Um, I'm not gonna go through it. Well, I'm gonna talk about this example, but I'm not, I've written it out already for you. So the time, X minutes to install an alarm system may be assumed to be a normal random variable such that P, X is less, uh, so the probability of X is less than 160 is equal to 0 0.15, and the probability that X is greater than 200 is equal to 0 0.05. So determine to the nearest minute the values of the mean and standard deviation of X. Okay, so we're gonna get a simultaneous equation here. Um, so drawing these graphs here, um, so the area is 0 0.15, um, and I know that the value is 160 on the left graph, and the area above uh, is 0 0.05, uh, and the value is 200. So we can use the calculator or the tables to find 0 0.15 and 0 0.05, um, and basically it gives us these values over here. Um, and then I can use the standard normal um, Z uh, to equal it to these things to find uh, to get these equations here, and then I'm going to solve simultaneously to get this and this. Um, if you've got any questions about this, just pop them down in the comments and I'll happily answer them. I'm just trying to save time a little bit here. Um, I, if you don't know how to use calculator, like I said, that there are loads of videos telling you how to use calculator to, to get these values. Using a normal distribution to approximate a binomial distribution. Okay, so this is only valid in some cases and we need to know the conditions in which uh, they're valid. So if X follows the binomial distribution NP, then 
n times p has got to be greater than 5, uh, and n times 1 minus p has got to be greater than 5. So either p needs to be close to half, or n needs to be large. Normally, it's n needs to be large. So if the conditions are true, then it, it can be approximated using this distribution, mp as the mean, and then mp times 1 minus p, uh, as the variance okay so and just a, another point please do check your exam board um, some exam boards need you to use a continuity correction some don't um, again I'm not going to go into it it's not worth our time at this point telling you the differences between that um, but just check either with your teacher or with your exam board whether you need to do that if you've never heard it before then you probably don't need to do it um, but it's probably worth checking. Okay, a dice is rolled 180 times. The random variable x is the number of times uh, a 3 is scored. So the probability of getting a 3 uh, is a sixth. Use a normal distribution to calculate that p, uh, sorry, the probability that x is less than 27. So first of all, x follows binomial uh, 180 times. And the probability is one sixth, and then this can be approximated because n p and n times one minus p is greater than five because n is so high. To the normal distribution of 30 that's np so that's 180 times a sixth and then the variance is 25 so that's np times 1 minus p so then what i want and again you can just get this straight from calculator and then that's 0 0.274 uh, if you're doing it for with a continuity correction, it would be uh, is less than 26.5, and then that would give you 0 0.242 uh, to three significant figures. Okay, moving on, sampling. So if you're working with the mean of a sample of several observations from a population, uh, for example, calculating the probability that the mean or x bar is less than a specified value then the following distribution must be used so x bar follows normal distribution mu and then the variance over n where n is the sample size so mu is the population mean and uh, sigma squared is the population variance so let's do this example uh, Alex spends x minutes each day looking at social media websites x is a random variable which can be modeled by a normal distribution with mean 70 minutes and standard deviation 15 minutes calculate the probability that on five randomly selected days the mean time alex spends on social media is greater than 85 so the first thing is n equals 5 x bar follows n uh, 70 15 squared because that's the population variance over 5 divided by 5 because that is uh, the sample size and then using that uh, distribution I want the probability that x bar is greater than 85 that's just what the question wants you type that in your calculator and you get 0 0.0127 to three significant figures Okay, hypothesis testing. This is um, a really big topic. It comes up every year. It's so important that you just learn it. Okay, it's really, really important. It's normally a seven marker. If you learn it and you don't necessarily need to have much understanding, um, just make sure you know uh, your hypothesis testing. It's so important. Um, even if you can't get all seven marks, you should definitely be able to get at least half marks even if you have no idea and you just memorize this stuff okay so for binomial hypothesis testing you set up the hypothesis so h naught uh so you just say the probability is equal to a that will be in the question 
and then you say the alternative hypothesis H1 uh, so P is less than A for a one-sided test uh, P does not equal A for a two-sided test and P is greater than A for a one-sided test and it will tell you in the question which one so state the significance level as a percentage the lower the value the more stringent the test okay state the distribution slash model used in the test so in this case it will be binomial NP calculate the probability of the observed results occurring using the assumed model so all this information will be in the question compare the calculated probability to the significance level and then based on that you either accept or reject H0 um, whether it's true or not and then write a conclusion and this is the important bit in context to the question so uh, they're always looking for context in the question if you don't write context you can't get that mark um, so reject H0 and as an example it will say there is sufficient e evidence to suggest that da -da 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 is an underestimation or overestimation and then if you're accepting H0, there is insufficient evidence to suggest that da -da -da -da, increase slash decrease. Da -da -da -da, therefore, we cannot reject the null hypothesis. Therefore, P equals uh, A. Null hypothesis being H0. So let's have a good, uh, let's have a look at th this example. Uh, the probability that patients have to wait more than 10 minutes at GP surgery is 0.3. One of the doctors claims that there is a decrease in the number of patients having to wait more than 10 minutes. She records the waiting times for the next 20 patients and three wait more than 10 minutes. Is there evidence at the 5% significance level to support the doctor's claim? Okay, so first things first. H0 is equal to, uh, sorry, H0 is that the probability is equal to 0 0.3. H1, the alternative hypothesis, is that P is less than 0 0.3. Significance level, 5% significance level. Okay, so then we need to be really clear in the context. So X is number of patients waiting more than 10 minutes. So X follows binomial, there are 20 patients and the probability is 0 0.3 and then using the tables or your calculator we can work out the probability uh, that X is less than or equal to 3 is equal to 0 0.107. Which is 10.7%. As, in fact, let me write that, make that crystal clear. As 10.7% is greater than 5%, there is insufficient evidence to suggest. that the waiting times, there's my context, uh, have reduced, therefore accept H0 and conclude that P is equal to 0 
I hope that made sense. Like I said, just do loads of questions on hypothesis testing, learn the mark schemes, learn what they're looking for. Um, it's normally about seven marks. Uh, it, it should be a given on the day. Okay, critical values and regions. So for the above example uh, of the um, doctor's waiting times, binomial 20, 0 0.35 significance level, 5% significance level, um, I can get all these points. So we're trying, basically trying to find the point at which it H0 is accepted slash rejected. Um, so 0, 1, 2, we've got all the probabilities from uh the the calculator slash tables there um so basically the critical region is x is less than two less than or equal to two because everything below that would have been rejected uh, we would reject h naught so the critical region there is x is less than or equal to two critical values zero one and two anything less than or equal to two so i'm not going to go through this example the the answers are there but let's just read it a sweet manufacturer packs sweets with 70 percent fruit and the rest mint flavored they want to test if there has been a change in the ratio of fruit to mint flavors at the 10 percent significance level so a less stringent test than the last one to do this they take a sample of 20 sweets what are the critical regions so this is where we basically do the same thing. So X is the number of fruit sweets, and this follows the binomial 20, 0 0.7, 20, because that's the number of uh, the, the sample size. Uh, H naught is P equals 0 0.7, and this is a two-tailed test, because it basically says they want to know if it's changed. So it's the alternative um, hypothesis is that P doesn't equal 0 0.7, so at a 10% significance level, that's 5% at each end of the tail. Um, so the lower tail, uh, using your calculator or the tables, x is less than or equal to 10 is 0 0.0480, so 4.8%. So this gives us critical region of x is less than 10, less than or equal to 10. So the critical value is 10. Upper tail, 17 doesn't quite reach it, 18 does. 3.5% is obviously less than 5%. So the critical region is X is greater than or equal to 18. The critical value is 18. So critical regions uh, are X is less than or equal to 10 or X is greater than or equal to 18. Okay, so normal distribution hypothesis testing. Um, so we set up the hypothesis. We basically say the mu is equal to a given mu. Um, and then the alternative hypothesis is basically saying that the actual mu is or the mean is less than a given mean so i the mean has decreased uh, two-sided is saying that the means are different now it's changed uh, and then if the mean is greater than mu naught then one-sided test and they're basically saying the mean has increased okay so h1 if it's uh, decreased uh, the critical region is this kind of alpha, the two, uh, the one-tailed test. Critical region is alpha over two because uh, it's two-tailed, so you've got to split it. And then if it's increased, we want the upper end. Um, so now we need to investigate the value you are working with by either, and there are a couple of methods here. Uh, see uh, if your observed value lies in the critical region. Reject H0 if it does. Or you can calculate the probability, the p-value, of getting the observed value. If there's greater, uh, sorry, or greater if testing for increase. If H0 is true uh, and reject H0 if the probability is less than the significance level. Write a conclusion. Don't just state hate, uh, accept or reject H0. You need to say there is insufficient evidence or sufficient evidence, uh, depending on the situation. So for accepting H0, you say there is insufficient evidence to, to suggest that the mean of whatever it is, putting it into context. Therefore, we cannot reject the null hypothesis or H0 that mu is equal to mu naught. 
for rejecting it, there is insuffi- uh, sorry, there is sufficient evidence su- to suggest that the mean has changed based on the results. Uh, conclude that the mean of da, 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 has increased slash decreased does not equal uh, mu naught. I hope that makes sense. So we've got two different types there. Um, again, I'm not going to go through this question, but I've got. I mean, I'm going to talk about it, but I'm not going to write it out for you. Uh, the test results of a large group of students uh, are thought to follow a normal distribution with mean 90 uh, and variance 80. A random sample of 20 students is found to have a mean of 94 points. Test at the 5% significance level to investigate the claim that the mean has increased. So H0 is mu equals 90. The alternative hypothesis is that mu is greater than 90 because they, they said that the mean has increased. So then we can say x bar follows n, uh, 90, and then 80 over 20 because 20 is n and 80 is the variance. So because it's a sample, we need to um, change the normal distribution there slightly. Again, two methods here. I would probably use the left method, uh, but it's completely up to you. So critical region of 5%, find that on the calculator, uh, 1.6449, equal it to the Z value if you like, to find x, and you end up getting x is 93.3, so it gives you the critical region value, uh, and as 94 is greater than uh, 93.3, 94 coming from here in the question, uh, it is in the critical region, indicating there is in, uh, there is sufficient evidence to suggest that the mean has increased indicating an improved performance in the test. Okay, great. Correlation coefficient. Okay, so testing to investigate whether the linear relationship represented by R, calculated from the sample, is strong enough to use the model, uh, to model the relationship in the population. So R is the correlation coefficient calculated using sample size N, uh, rho, that's not P, it's rho, unknown population correlation coefficient. The test checks whether P is close to zero, uh, sorry, not P, rho is close to zero or significantly different from zero. Um, and then, so this is another type of hypothesis testing. Uh, so we would say our null hypothesis is rho equals zero. There is no correlation between two variables. Uh, and then our alternative uh, hypothesis would be rho doesn't equal zero, rho is greater than zero, rho is less than zero. Okay, so again, another example um, here, but the answer is already there. The length of service uh, and current salary is recorded for 30 employees in a large company. The product moment correlation coefficient R of the 30 employees is 0.35. Test the hypothesis uh, that there is no correlation between an employee's length of service and current salary at the 5% significance level. Okay, so you set it up. We've done a handful of these examples now. So H0 um, is rho equals zero. The alternative hypothesis is that rho doesn't equal zero. So it's a two-tailed test, n equals 30. Uh, at the significant level is 5%, but that's going to be 2.5% on either side. Um, so the critical values from the tables or the calculator is equal to 0 0.3610, leading to the critical region of R is less than negative 0.36 or greater than 0.361. Uh, so then as R equals 0 0.35, it's not in the region and so there is insufficient evidence to show that the correlation is significantly different from zero. And that is the end of the video, guys. I hope this helped. Good luck in your exams. Give us a like and subscribe if you made it this far. It really helps the channel.